I just want to point this out before we even get started with the Brian Dable conversation is I have been objective and I have been even optimistic with the benefit of the doubt the whole season. The whole season. I have not dredged on Brian Dable. I have been honest about what I thought I saw and I was even optimistic about what I was hoping to see and even justifying some of the things that he was doing. Well, I'm here to let you know that that time is absolutely over. (laughs) Subscribe and ride with us on YouTube, and don't forget to check out live play-by-play of the Bills season coming up on Sportscaster. I am done. Done, done, but done, here, done, done. Here's my follow-up to that. After this, what's ever on your chest comes out. Is it over? Is this one and done, or is this no? Be Brian Dable's got no. We may have to. We may have to devote a weekly segment to. <laughs> Listen, I'll always carry the shovel for Brian Dable. My <laughs> hair is just not. You know how people always talk about how oh, you always carried a candle for this person, like mm. it's not. No, I'm always going to carry a shovel for Brian Dable. So, what you're thinking of is the top four reasons you are disappointed in Dable. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's fair? I think top four reasons why Brian Dable is a hot pot of disappointment. <laughs> Here's what Brian Dable is to me. Because I've, le- I've had to let this simmer and percolate for a while right this is here's 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 brian dable to me as as a bills fan brian dable is that you know when it's on a sunday you got you're watching football but at like nine o'clock you like started a roast in the crock pot and the the house is smelling great right it's it's just that beautiful smell of you got good football you got food waiting for you you know it's going to be good because it's been cooking for hours and it's just ah, uh, it's going to be juicy and tender and mar- and marvelous, right? Yes. And then it gets time for dinner, and you take the lid off, and all that happened was somebody took Dinty Moore beef stew and just dumped it into the crock pot and just heated it for four hours. That's what I got. I got gas station beef stew. When I'm thinking I'm getting like the federal cut. The federal meats cut, dropping in. There were some carrots and potatoes, and and you know, no, I got Dinty Moore beef stew. How dare you spit on the legacy of Dinty Moore? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, feeding families for generations. You insensitive prick. <laughs> There's gonna be lots of those. Oh. There's gonna be lots of those this episode. Okay, I've been waiting for it. Hashtag Nation's been waiting for it. I will. I'll do you one better. I will offer a counter point to every one of your disappointments. Oh my god. Oh, br- brilliant. If I can. <laughs> if not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab a shovel myself. Okay. Reason number one why I'm disappointed with Brian Dable is you have beat, admittedly, five of the worst teams in the NFL. Non-playoff teams. You've beaten all non-playoff teams. True. You, every team you've beat has been a non-playoff team, and the best you could do is score 28 points. The best you could do is score 28 points. With this defense giving you possessions, with this defense helping you control the clock, the best you could do is happen into 28 points on offense. Okay. You went against the Bengals, you scored 21. You went against Miami, you scored 24. Those two teams are terrible. Terrible! People are going to think this is a domestic issue while we pull up to Tim Hortons. Reason number one why I'm frustrated with Brian Dable is you've beat you've beaten teams that beat themselves and you've scored nothing along the way okay that's so reason number one so you're you're attributing the slow progress of this offense to one man oh 100 percent brian uh, dable 100 percent brian, brian dable. dable okay 100 percent no i mean there's not been an injury not on the this quality team. control no nope. the nope. new offensive parts that you have put together nope don't care because the excuse last year was he didn't have anything to work with. Yeah. Now this year is he has things to work don't with. Don't care. But now the excuse transferred to they're all new. Yeah. Don't care. We said it admittedly. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I definitely we've definitely I definitely made that, said that. Like yeah. it, it's all new guys. Dawkins sure. and Allen, only two guys. So sure. all right, continue. Yeah. 
number two of why Brian Dable is a pot of dinty more stew. Coming into today, Frank Gore had 75 rushing attempts for 333 yards and two touchdowns. Very respectable. It's 4.4 yards a carry. He's a beast. Which is outstanding. Mm. In the NFL, that is outstanding. It is. Yeah. Uh, anything above four yards a carry is outstanding. It is. Okay. So, the Bills, on the season, right now, have, let's see, team rushing stats. So, your team has run for 698 yards as a team. In six games. In six games. Okay. Respectable. Right. Good. 4.8 yards a carry. Right? Okay. Here's my problem. You're very good at running the football, right? You're very good at running the football. True. So if I see one more three and out, that is pass, 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 I'm going to snap my phone in half. You're running the football at 4.5 yards a clip. You run the football three times, you get a first down! (laughs) Run the ball for Christ's sake! Run the ball. Run the ball. You want to help Josh Allen? Run the football. You want to make play action mean something? I don't know. Run the football. They, you want to, you want to get Josh Allen those throws deep? Perhaps you should run the football. I don't know. Maybe I'm taking crazy pills here. But under no circumstance can you have a team that's averaging 4.7 yards a carry. 4.7 yards a carry. As a team, run the football. Just run the football. It's and easy. to go along with your point, they don't have many long runs. No. There's not many, nope. hey, they broke off an 80 yarder in two no. of the games. It's not stat inflation. It's, it's not, not stat inflation. Okay, all right. Yeah. I just want that's an important point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we had to live through the C.J. Spiller years. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so got 1,200 yards rushing. 800 were in the, the second, second half, half when yeah. they were down by 14 points. It doesn't count. Right. And here's what's so fascinating. When they built the offensive line, we looked at it and said, these are all pass protection guys, right? Yes. And the Bills are throwing the ball a lot this season. They are. A lot. A lot um, and they, they used rush. a lot of play action today. They right? Did. They sure did. They used a lot did of play they, action. Did they realize that they were running the ball successfully? <laughs> I don't know. But... They used enough play action to make it feel like they were going to run the football a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they are very effective when they run the football. Like, that's that's just it. They they can turn it out on the ground when they decide they want to. Mm-hmm. And they, they're very good at it. Now, I do admit that when they do run the football, it is a little telegraphed because they typically go heavy. They're not running the football out of three wide sets. Two tight that end is, sets. They're mainly in two tight end yeah. sets. Right. So I, I understand that it's telegraphed a little bit, but even when it's telegraphed, they're still running the football effectively. And they're not running the football because the pass is effective. Let's just call a spade a spade. The run game is not effective because people are afraid of Josh Allen throwing the football. People are not afraid of Josh Allen throwing the football. Teams are going to start not caring that Allen could throw the football over a mountain because they're giving him the deep pass. You look at the game today, you look at the game against Miami, he missed two deep passes by a country mile, both of them. But you know what would make those looks a little easier? You run the goddamn football. You, you bring a guy in the box and you make them shut down the run. Make them shut down the run. Run the football. Just, just run it? I don't even care with who. You know what's funny? I don't care. And you know, it's totally ironic, but the, the Earnhardt Perkins system mm-hmm. that Dable's trying to run. Yep. You know what the mantra of that is? Build it off the run. Pass to score, run to win. Mm-hmm. That's point number two. Run the football. Okay. Are we ready for point number three? Numero tres. Point number three. Run the f-ing football. <laughs> <laughs> that's how important it is. Again. Again. Um, no, that's not point number three. Uh, point number three is your wide receiver group is not built vertically right now right so no the it's, not. That, it's no. not so you have they and the bills joke about it calling them smurfs right the yes. bill it's a joke that the bills are the smurfs mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so 
you are taking Robert Foster off the field, which at this point, for him not being active against Miami, I have to believe that it's a preparation issue. That's not an injury issue anymore. Hmm. Because Foster gets, got banged on a lot in the preseason about not exactly being dialed in and prepared. He, used to, he ran wrong routes. He was running the wrong routes. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know if that has been fixed or if that is, you know, relieved in any way uh, or if there's been any improvement there. But you need Robert Foster right now because Andre Roberts is not stretching the field for you. He's no. not He's not the deep threat. Can he get downfield as fast as Robert Foster? We saw it today, yeah. Yeah, he can get down the field, but the difference between Andre Roberts and Robert Foster is about five inches, right? On a, you, need, you need to be able to get a bigger guy downfield, and Robert Foster was the answer to that last season. You cannot stretch the ball downfield, and I don't know if there's a correlation between you're not stretching the ball downfield effectively and Robert Foster inactive. Do you think there's a correlation? Absolutely. Okay, so you think Robert Foster fixes the vertical game? Because I, I do have my problems with Robert Foster. I'm not going to say that I don't. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Oh, man. Man, Uber Eats is struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Some dude driving down the, the Niagara Falls Boulevard in the middle of the right-hand lane with his bike. You're looking at the star. Like, that guy was spaced out. I think he was at the game. <laughs> it was a long bike ride. That's why he's tired. <laughs> so if you want to talk about, and we talked about it on the broadcast, if you have smoke, John Brown, right. he can stretch the field vertically for you. Uh, he he doesn't, doesn't always do it. Why? Right. Because that's not really the play design or concept that Dable wants to run. I can understand that. The other reason is this. They're putting a safety over the top to account mm-hmm. for him because he's the only vertical threat. Right. Now you put Andre Roberts on the field to try to open up things underneath. Mm-hmm. All right, because you got a vertical threat on one side, a vertical threat on the other side. That happens to open it up. If you have Robert Foster in the game, opposite of John Brown, now they can't. Now they're either going to have to dedicate two safeties to come over the top for right. those, both of those guys, or mm-hmm. have a corner that can play man. Right. Or um, they're going to sacrifice things in the underneath game. Right. Now a lot of those under, underneath throws that that Allen's hitting right now. They are some tight windows because you don't have anybody stretching the field. Mm-hmm. Once, Foster, once Foster's in there, he doesn't necessarily have to be getting the ball. Right. He just needs to get a guy out of the box. Right. Now, who's doing that? Who's supplementing that right now? Knox is running down the middle of the field yep. to try to break coverage. Yep. That's, that's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of that happens to stem off of you don't have a vertical threat on the opposite side of smoke. Right. Well, and I guess that kind of leads me into one of my major contentions is you need to activate the deep game, right? You need to figure out a way to activate the deep game. I think this leads into point two. You run the football effectively, you're going to activate the deep game. That's, okay. what, yep. that's what the Bills tried to do last year was run, 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 run. Like they tried to, they were force feeding the run game poorly. But the deep passes were designed deep passes. Do you think the play action game is successful? Uh, not if you're only running the football 16 times a game. No, play my, action's not effective. Well, my point is this you're running the ball effectively. Why isn't the play action working? What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? There Don't you is. think because they're 4.8? 4, 4. You gave the number before. Yeah. If they're at 4.8 yards a clip, mm-hmm. if, you, if you're running that successful, even though the volume of touches you don't have, mm-hmm. If you run play action, do you think it'd be successful? No, I think they're I think they're seeding the run to the Bills. Because you're looking at Frank Gore, and you're like, I'm not really worried about having to chase down Frank Gore. We can keep Frank Gore in front of us. I really feel like that's a lot of defenses are walking in saying, we can keep Frank Gore in front of us. He, the Bills only run the ball 15 times a game. This is not a big deal. So you think you say they're playing the pass? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My problem is when they when they go to the play action game, Yeah. everyone's covered. That's scheme. Yeah. That's on Dable. Yeah. That's not an Allen. Right. But there are times where guys are open, Allen misses them. Sure. He missed Croft wide open in the end. Oh, yeah, big time. To get to uh, Robert Foster, let's play a fun game. Let's play wide receivers who have played more snaps than Robert Foster on the Bills right now. You ready? Let's play a game. So we obviously know uh, John Brown has taken like 85% of the snaps uh, for the Bills. Cole Beasley had 65%. So we know, and they've been active for more games, right? Yep. Did Zay Jones play more snaps than Robert Foster, yes or no? Yes. Okay, you're right. 169 snaps to Robert Foster. I'm not telling you how many Foster played yet. Okay, uh, TJ Yeldon. Has TJ Yeldon played more snaps than Robert Foster? Yes. You're right. Yes, he has. TJ Yeldon's at 109. Just I just incl- I'm just, yeah, just including offensive players. Okay, Devin Singletary, who missed two games. I'm going to say no. Incorrect. Devin Singletary has played more snaps than Robert Foster. Wow. How about Isaiah McKenzie? Yes. 
Isaiah McKenzie has played more snaps than Robert Foster. Roberts, yes. Yeah. Uh, how about Andre Roberts? Roberts, yes, I said. Andre Roberts, after today, will have played more snaps than Robert Foster. Um, I, uh, Duke Williams? No. Robert Foster has played less snaps than Duke Williams. Fact. Duke Williams has been active for a game and a half, and he's going to play more snaps than Robert Foster. Is he getting traded? Foster? Different episode, but... I don't think there's... I don't, I don't think there's... I, there's value for Foster. There's value for Foster. Okay. Right. Um, but I think I think dynamically, when you're looking at the vertical game, right? You talk about John Brown being a dynamic vertical threat. Yeah. John Brown has to catch a pass differently at his height than Robert Foster does at his height. Very true. Right? People forget about Foster's height. Yeah. Foster's 6'2". Yeah. Big dude. So... The type of deep ball that Allen throws, is it more likely that Brown is going to catch a deep pass from Allen, or is it more likely that Foster is going to catch a deep pass from Allen? Foster can adjust better than Brown can. Okay. Brown has to beat his man, mm-hmm. not have a safety over the top, and the ball has to be placed in the basket. Right. If it's we've and seen Allen has year, and Allen has a history of not throwing passes with touchdown no, field. No. They're all bullets. But yeah, but. We've seen from last year, Foster's able to adjust to his passes. Yep. In the air, jumping, turning, contorting himself. Right. I wouldn't say he's a go up and get it guy, mm-hmm. but he has done that. Mm-hmm. The fact is, John Brown is not going to be an effective vertical threat for you. John Brown's going to activate 20 to 25, 20 to 30 yards. That's John Brown's efficiency range. Yep. Right? Because he can create separation in that window. If you're asking John Brown to run further down the field, he's not going to be an effective weapon in that space. He's not going to be effective. Robert Foster, you have to get involved, and he's been inactive every game. For the most part, he's been inactive or injured. It's one of the great you got, mysteries. you got to get him in. You yeah. have to pass deep. Brian Dable's failure to activate the deep game is going to hurt this team once we get into the teeth of the season. You think Dallas is going to give, a, is going to give any consideration to Allen throwing a ball past 25 yards on a, on a nine route? No. Dallas doesn't care. Did you just implicit? Go ahead. Go ahead. Did you just implicitly say that we're one player away? No. From no. activating the deep game and this offense opens up? No, we're two <laughs> players away. We're we're one Robert Foster away from activating the deep game. And we're one Yeah, I guess I did. I can't justify it. Yeah, I kinda did. <laughs> but we don't have to trade for this one. Sorry on the team. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta play Robert Foster. You gotta play Robert Foster. Right. I understand that it might come at at Isaiah McKenzie's snap count, but I guess that's a confusing thing to me. You have Roberts and McKenzie who are effectively doing, effectively the same player. So why are you using McKenzie in Jets, in a Jet situation when you really you brought Andre Roberts in? Isn't that something he should be effective at? Like I guess I don't understand why you have both of them on the team. It's having two of the same player. I don't, I don't get it. You literally said Roberts and McKenzie are the same person. They're basically the same. Yeah, they're effectively the same I've never the seen them in the same room together. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Their numbers are only one jersey number off. Maybe <laughs> maybe they have Velcro, and they just put the number on, and then they take the number off, and that's a different guy. <laughs> Why do they activate both of them, then? It makes sense. <laughs> if you're Brian Dable, you got to activate the deep game because this offense is not going to be able to tread water like this any longer. Mm, no. And your fourth reason... So curious. The, la- the last and final reason why Brian Dable is a pot of dinty more stew? Yes. Okay. So, the Bills have had to, and correct me if I'm wrong here, because I don't feel I'm wrong, but you let me know if I am. The Bills have not won a game where they weren't also trailing at one point. Okay. Is that right? I'm pretty sure in the Jets game, they were behind. Okay. Right? So let's go through. The Jets Giants. game. The Giants game. Were they ever behind in the Giants game? No. Yeah. They were down 7 nothing. Yeah. Okay. So every right. game, they so trailed. Every single game, they've trailed. Yes. At some point. Yes. Okay. I want to refer to point one, is that you've been behind five teams who have won a combined five games. 20 games have been played. Like, over 20 games have been played. They've won five. 
out of the 20 available games, right? Actually, more than that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because so there, like there was a couple games, buys yeah. here and there, yeah. Yeah, so like almost 30 games have been played. They've won five combined. So you've been behind those teams, right? Why are you behind them? That's not the defense's fault. You, it's because you're pissing away possessions. You're pissing them away. They are moving the ball, though. You're right. They do. They are moving the ball. Um, I understand that. But there are many I think, teams. That... I, I well, I, I just want to get to this point real fast. Yeah. The first three, the first two possessions of the Bills game to, uh, against Miami were so aggravating for me. They were annoying. They were so aggravating because you're there. I didn't expect three plays you were going to score, obviously. But no. you you, draw, you consistently march the ball down the field and score a touchdown. That's what you do to bad teams. Yeah. And they didn't do that. You put them away. Yeah. Yeah. You get you knock on the door and you barge in. That's what happens. And instead, they knocked on the door and they said, you know what? We're just going to leave this outside. <laughs> you know? Like, that's it. And they left, they, they left the package on the porch and they kicked the field goal. They did it twice. And then now you're losing. And that's not the defense's fault. You no. can't expect the defense to hold up your offense every single game. Prior to the Dolphins game, they held three of their opponents. <clears throat> three out of the five games that they played, including the loss to, my, uh, to New England. Three out of the five games, they held them under 10 points. Yeah. That's ridiculous for a defense to do that. But that's NFL. what a good defense does to bad teams. You keep, you don't let them New England's score. in there, though. New right, England I understand that New too. England's in there. So, um, it seems like you're, what you're talking about is that they're playing to the level of their competition. Consistently. But the downside is is that they're playing to the level of their competition, Mario, but they're behind. They're yeah. trailing. Yeah. Good teams don't trail. Like, it, you, don't, you don't let bad teams get ahead of you. Because as soon as a team gets ahead of you, guess what? You're just one or two mistakes away from not being able to get that lead back. You know what, though? To be honest with you, as much as I, I'm frustrated with Dable as well. I would. His play calling is better when they're losing than when they're winning. Oh God! Please don't tell me this is part of the master plan. No, no. Oh, but God, you have to say that. that when they're losing, his play calling is much more effective than yeah. it is when they're winning. Yeah. When they finally get the lead, he he, he goes to the snack bar. Where is he? <laughs> you have to explain to me how, as horrible as you think he is, how do you explain two 98-yard drives in one season in the first six games? Mm-hmm. That's impressive. It is. Now, you know, do you know why they're able to march down the field 98 yards? Tell me. Because when they need to, they can run the ball for 4.7 yards a carry, Mario! You know what? It seems that it's 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 a it's a fifty fifty balance right now. Of when Allen doesn't listen to Dable, they move the ball. When Dable calls plays that Allen automatically knows where to go, like those little screens, mm-hmm. he catches the ball and throws it right away. Yeah, that those aren't reads, really. No, those no, aren't. No, no. Those aren't. That, that's not him going through progressions. Right. What worries me is that Allen's. Prog- the more I watch film, mm-hmm. as frustrated as I am with the play call, his progressions aren't any better than that. So you think that I think that, that some of some of the lack of the offense's consistency is in Josh Allen. Not I in think Brian. that prior to the year and a lot of the things that I thought about, it was 80-20, Dable to Allen. You don't feel that way anymore. I 60, think it's 40? I think it's sixty forty okay. or fifty five forty five. I really okay. do. I as frustrating as because there are guys that I've I've watched film. Guys are open. Mm-hmm. He's not getting on the ball. And I don't know, but that, the reason why it's 55-45 and not 50-50 or 60-40 is as the offensive coordinator, it is your job to tell him where to look. I like it when you get angry. Is it the quarterback's coach? Is Dorsey just chilling? No. Now, instead of slamming the Microsoft Surface on the ground and yelling at Josh Allen on the sideline, how about you coach the kid up? Unless you don't know how to do that. Coach the kid up. Tell him where to look. Here. And, en- and enough of these. See, now you got me going. Enough of these freaking two-man routes. Oh, God. He's got six seconds to throw, but nobody's open. Yeah. So he's going to run. Yeah. Great. So, I Idiot. guess I, I get frustrated with Dable 
is it seems like he's willing to let Josh Allen make mistakes while the game is even, right? While there's no score, they, when the script is out, right? When they run, the, when they finally run the script, they seem to say, okay, well, let's see, let's let Josh make some decisions out here, right? No matter what the score is, but as soon as they get behind. They start going. They start taking the plays off of Josh's plate. They start yeah. taking that responsibility away, and then they start moving the football. Right? I would rather Josh Allen make mistakes while they're ahead than while they're even or behind. So what you're saying is because they've been behind, it's been because Allen's decision making. They're letting him do what he needs to do. They're allowing him to make mistakes, but so, so I think they, they're I think they're doing this at the wrong times, right? And that's that's game management. That's on David. Mm -hmm. They're allowing Allen to make reads and make decisions while the score is even, right? Trying to give him that opportunity to learn and get better. I totally understand that. I would much rather Josh Allen start working through his progressions when they're up 14 than when they're down 7. I'd rather he do that when they're up 14 or up 10 than when they're even. But that's where we are right now. It's the only time they take the keys to the car away is when, you know, is when they're behind. So they take the keys to the car away from him? Every fourth quarter? Yeah. Is that what it seems like? Yeah. Wow. Go, when you're, Mar, Mar, when you're watching film, tell me how many checks Allen makes in the fourth quarter. Go on, you tell me how many checks Allen makes in the fourth quarter. He doesn't. He's not checking out of plays. Seen any, no, I haven't seen any. But in the first and second quarter, you better damn well believe that he's making checks. And guess when they end up behind? First in the and first and second quarter. quarter. It's frustrating. You want to let the kid win, I understand that. You want to make the kid better, I understand that. And I encourage you to teach him. However, teaching him how to lose football games and then you guiding him back to victory, that's not teaching. That's teaching the wrong thing. What you're doing is, that that's like the theory of, well, you know, we'll teach the kid to swim, so we're just going to throw him in the lake till basically he drowns. Then we'll, then we'll pull him out, and then we'll hold him in the water for a little bit, and then, you know, that, that you're... You're, you're not teaching him to swim. You know what you're teaching him, though? No come, no, no lead is insurmountable at this point. What do, you, I, what do you mean by that? No lead that your opponent has is insurmountable. You can come back. So you're teaching the kid resiliency. I think. I think that's... It's I, not I, on Alan, purpose. Allen has a history of trying to play hero ball. I do not think this is the right way yeah, to but they don't this. let him. In the fourth quarter, you just told me that. They don't let him play hero ball in the fourth quarter. I, what I'm saying, though, is that from a character development standpoint, from a player development standpoint, mm -hmm. once they start allowing him to make his own decisions, don't you feel like he's going to say, well, I've, I've come back from this 100 times. That's I've come back from this 100 times. No problem. I understand resiliency. I yeah. get that. But I think there's a fine line between resiliency and what Josh Allen does when he's running out of options. You, play, you like golf, right? I do like golf. Okay. Allen, to me, for the four quarters, if if – He's, he's dubbing your drive. Mm -hmm. You hit your second shot into the sand. Mm -hmm. You hit another one out that goes way over the green. Mm -hmm. And then you chip your fourth shot in. That's what Allen is to me right now. It's par. par. We won. See yeah. ya. We're even. <laughs> it's, it's frustrating to me. And I know this is another episode, the Josh Allen episode. I know there's another episode here. Yes. But it's frustrating to me to watch them. To, it's frustrating for me for them to be okay to allow him to suffer, right? And then something happens and they give up the lead and now we have to come back. And now the play calling gets really simple, right? And now it's he's going to single read plays. And that's not the quarterback that you drafted. You didn't draft a single a single read quarterback. You drafted him to try and develop him. But when the game's on the line, you're taking that away from him. Well, the game's on the line because you allowed him to get you in that place in the first place. Mm -hmm. What you should be doing is you should be taking that approach to get you the lead to start, and then if you want to let him learn from that point out when it's a little bit safer to make mistakes, then that makes more sense to me. Hey, then you're literally 14, losing you every si you're literally losing every single game that he's played in this season. You've, you're losing at one point every single game. When are you going to get it out of your head that this is something that's okay? This is not okay. You're not going to be able to lose against Dallas and come back. No. You're not going to be able to lose against the Ravens and come back. No. These teams are going to be able to make the adjustments that you've been able to fool these teams that have a combined five wins, and you've been able to fool them along the way. But you're not going to, as the season goes on, you're not going to be able to fool these teams into that any longer. 
It's just going to get harder. And I guess that's the biggest thing is I know we're five and one. And I'm excited about the fact that the Bills are five and one. I really am. Mm-hmm. Very excited about that. However, there's some there's some bookmarks in that. There's there's some asterisks. There's some asterisks in this in this record that that I am concerned about. And one is every game you've won, you've also been losing at one point. And I think that's a big deal. And I, I put that on Dable. I don't put that on Allen. We'll put it on Allen. What's what's this what's the stew called? What's in it? Dinty Moore stew. Is Dinty Moore? Yeah, it's Dinty Moore. Dinty Dable. Well, here's the deal, right? Dinty Moore stew has like 800 grams of sodium in it, right? And we all know that sodium's bad for your heart. And you're incredibly salty right I now. I am damn salty. 